What's up, everybody? This is the Uncanny Omar, and today it brings me so much pleasure to have this guy with me. I don't think I need to introduce him, but just in case you don't know who he is, this is Scotty Young, a freaking awesome artist, a great writer, and man, I think I was talking to you a little bit earlier. Your your art has graced just about every Marvel character. It's it's uh, it's interesting. Now um, I never thought that would be the case but yeah I, I think back and i don't know that there's i mean you've got to you've got to do a pretty deep dive to find find somebody that i haven't drawn at least a little version of somewhere right exactly i was thinking of all the covers even the dead characters some of them you've drawn so this is pretty yeah. pretty cool and i am someone that has followed your work since the very beginning not not the beginning of your birth, but the <laughs> beginning of when you started drawing professionally, I guess, because it was all at, at Marvel. I remember finding your Venom and then your Spider Clan and the Human Torch. And I talked to you about this many years ago, but maybe you can share this story with us. How how did you how did they find you? How did, how did you get found? Um, Marvel. Um, I had I, I was at a convention. And, um, at Chicago, Chicago wizard world. And, um, I just had a portfolio. I was sitting with some, some friends of mine in Chicago that had a self-publishing company. Mm -hmm. His name is Joe Curry. Um, and he self-published comics and he let me come and sit with them at their artist alley table. And, um, CB Sobolski was, uh, you know, back from Japan and doing some indie stuff and had a studio and was doing some stuff with image. And had looked at my portfolio. No, by portfolio, I mean it was just like big kind of skater illustration <laughs> graffiti pieces. It wasn't even really comic book art. Um, but CB left his card, and again, I just heard like this guy from Image left his card, and and I I was young and I didn't really know how the business works, so I just thought Image like to me, it, yeah. I, I didn't really understand the difference between Image and Marvel and DC as far as how the business structure goes. So I just thought like, oh man, I'm gonna be loaded. <laughs> you know, this is it you know yeah um but anyway cb and i hooked up cb wasn't at, at marvel yet he, uh, he was doing any stuff but he hung around he was friends with some marvel people starting to do some uh some marvel writing projects yeah um and 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 he just happened to be out one night i think drinking with uh at a bar with a couple marvel editors as friends hanging out and one of them had said that they needed they, they cb was very well known for knowing a lot of up and coming artists. Um, he was very good at, he was very, he was really plugged into the scene. He had a really good eye for young talent and most people knew that. And so they, somebody needed, uh, Mike Martz needed an artist for a fill in issue of Iceman, um, yeah. that, that Carl Kershaw was drawing. Um, I didn't know Carl at the time we've become friends since, but, um, he said, "Hey, I but we need a really quick turnaround. I know you know a lot of artists. Do you know anybody that we that we could plug in there?" And he just suggested my name, and I did that one fill-in issue, um, and uh, and kept my job at Ed DeBevick's waiting tables. Um, and then uh, about six months later, CB got hired as an editor, and was was uh, tasked with with relaunching the Spider-Man Legend of the Spider Clan that Kari Andrews had done the one shot of, and Kari was going to write it. Um, and so they brought me on to draw that series and that's it. I've been doing that, um, uh, ever since my next, my next project right after that was human torch. And that came about, that came about from a random drawing that I had done and posted on a message board, you know, back when message boards were, the yeah, video, right. Right? um, it was just like, you know, a younger Johnny storm with flames and, you know, and jeans and, you know, just kind of basically me with, with <laughs> flame, <laughs> flamey head. And Tom Brevoort had seen that. That sketch kind of came across Tom Brevoort. So when the series came up, they he was like, "Hey, we should maybe we'll we'll tap this kid." So, um, yeah. And then and after that, I just been I've been there ever since. And 20, 20 years later, I'm still doing Marvel stuff. I, I hate when you say twenty years later that that it because it still doesn't feel like that, dude. Like I know, it, right? it was yesterday that it was two thousand. And I know. I, wow. Yeah, I, I remember all that. And then uh, your art. I remember when you started drawing new X Men. I feel like I'm doing the the history of uh, Scotty Young, but I remember when you were picked to draw new X Men. I was like, cool. I really dug that guy's art style. Uh, he helped uh, Venom, and when you drew new X Men, you had this uh, 
that's that's when I remember your art shifting. Yeah. And I'm I'm sure you know. You're right? good. You're good, Omar. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. <laughs> I'll hear. I may not remember my uh, to pick up my kids from school sometimes, but I remember. I remember these things. So I remember that moment that I'm like, okay, I love his artwork. He has this really in your face anime punk style. I love it. And then you changed it to a sketchier style that I assume accommodated so you can keep up with that monthly schedule because it's it's I I guess this is what I was assuming. Of course, I wasn't talking to you at the time, but. Sure. Um, what made, what made that shift? Cause that is kind of where your art went. Like it really what? Yeah. I, honestly, it, it didn't have anything to do with speed. It really was, it was this interesting time. So I was, I was brought on to new X-Men, um, to do the, the, to finish out whatever arc they were doing. Mm -hmm. And then um, I thought I was going to be able to do like, cause that's back when you like, there was always the summer X-Men crossover, right? The, uh, whatever big X yeah, that would, it would be a big X crossover with all the X-Men books. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and kind of part of the deal was I would come in and finish off that run, but I would also then get to move right on to the event, which I hadn't done yet. And I was like, kind of looking at that, like, as that's my next step in the big career, right? Like to be the event artist. Um, and I was supposed to do five issues. There was some delays in the regular book and in the main X uh, X Men book, so mm -hmm. they slotted in two more issues of new X Men before the event and asked me to do that. And I, I didn't really, I had a lot of that, but I all and I and, and at that time I'd also found out that I wasn't going to get the event. Um, Umberto Ramos was getting That's it. Normal, yeah. <laughs> Ironically <laughs> enough, <laughs> so. Um, Something else was going on during that time. We had that year, I had started up with some friends of mine in Chicago. We had started up a drink and draw. Once yeah, a week. I remember when you would post about that on your blog. Right, right. So we would get together with that once a week. And up until that point, I had been doing this really clean, animated, animated style. Um, and I, I'll be honest, it was always very labor intensive. It felt, it didn't. I always felt like, man, drawing should be more fun and not so laborious. Um, I shouldn't feel like I'm, I didn't want to feel like I was constructing a building. I wanted to feel like I was, I don't know, painting. Like I wanted to feel like things were just happening and not necessarily where I was like putting two boards together and making sure that the nail went in the right spot and, and everything was cut to the right lengths. And that's kind of what I felt like my art, where my art was. And so these drink and draws, what was funny is I would, I would, I had this new brush pen, you know, that, that was like a the ink brush with a cartridge or whatever. So I would, I would be like, I'm going to start using a brush and I'm going to try to oh, ink wow. like Tim Townsend and, you know, these master Tim Townsend. Yeah. Right? I love that. So, piece. so I was like, I'm going to start drawing like uh, ink and like Tim Townsend or Sandra Hope or Richard friend, these amazing inkers that are just like yeah. surgeons with that brush. Right. And so I would start off and I'd get a little bit into it and then I'd absolutely mess the drawing up. Like, cause the brush, I just did not have that kind of brush control, uh -huh. but I wouldn't, I also didn't want to just leave it. A, I didn't want to stop a drawing halfway. So I would start just like, Ugh, and just kind of whip through the rest of it to finish it. And after a couple of weeks, I started actually liking the rushed through part, <laughs> like there was something about the um, immediacy and the not thinking and the not where all of a sudden something started happening. I actually was drawing with ink and I was doing less work up front and I was doing a lot of the decision making in the ink. And then I was like, there's, a, there's some kind of energy here mm -hmm. that I am liking. I don't, I can't put my finger on it, but all of a sudden drawing was fun <laughs> like going to work with. So I was like, I had these two new issues of new X-Men that, that wasn't on the schedule. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm going to try, maybe I'll just try it. I didn't even ask anybody. Like I didn't warn anybody. So the editors hadn't seen it. Right? I didn't warn anybody. I just started turning in pages. Um, Cause it was just that time. It was right there at the midway of my career where I was like, I was itching to something. I just needed to shake something up. Um, and at this time as well, I started to get, I was getting offered the, um, Oz job. So, Oh, 
So there was just a there was a weird thing going on where I was like I was getting exposed to more European artists and um, starting to really like dive into other. There was a when I was younger. I feel like I only bought books from people that I wanted to try to draw like, right? So it's like, I love Joe Mad. So I, Joe Mad's, I, I look at his, art, right? Uh, or Umberto or Chris Bocello or the, you know, these artists. So in, in my, my library would pretty much only consist of them. Like, because I was like, I can't take in anything else. These are the artists, right? Yeah. But as I got older and more mature, I started realizing like, wait a minute, but that also kind of appeals to me and this kind of appeals to me. So all of a sudden my library became, I'm studying, you know, Bill Sienkiewicz and I'm starting to study, um, you know, Ashley Wood and um, a lot of European artists and, and Mobius and just like seeing all these different applications of lines. And as I started to do that, I was like, all right, I need to actually find what, I, who I am as an artist, like where, what it is. So weirdly enough, when I let go of influence, when I let go of what I thought I was supposed to draw, like, or what I think I wanted to draw, like, yeah, it's kind of when the, like the cream rose up, you know, and it was just, it was like, here it is. Like, here's how you draw. Um, Cause once I got on Oz, it just felt natural. I didn't feel like I wasn't, dreading work anymore you, know? <laughs> you and you were cranking out those issues and yeah it, man that's that's awesome i love i love hearing that you found your own style even though you you were inspired by all these wonderful creators and i think that's how a lot of people start right oh 100 percent. now some people never really stop getting inspired but you know yeah and then you find your own your own your own way of drawing. And I think that's wonderful. Uh, that gives a lot of people inspiration, right? right? A lot of people that are struggling right now, trying to find that art style. And you, I think what you said really stuck with me, man, just letting go. That's always the thing. It's like, you know, my, my, my drawing table at my desk used to be filled with other people's books, you know, mm -hmm. for me to be like, Oh, I wonder how they drew bricks or how did they draw a hand or whatever. Right. Like yeah. that's when I was younger. And then I realized that I really was starting to come into my own and figure out who I was as an artist when you look around and there's no more books on your table, you know? That's awesome because I, I remember when I was in, uh, when I was trying to draw, that's the same way I would do. I would have like anime stuff over here. Mm -hmm. I would have like Arthur Adams and John Byrne, right. and Jim Lee stuff over here. Right. And my brother, I got to give him a shout out. He just super chatted for no reason. He <laughs> loves food. If anybody love knows it. what did I do, it's my brother. He's like, what's up, Scotty? I have to put work and Pokemon Go aside to show love and appreciation to such a right. talented artist. Oh, and hey, Omar. Thanks, Tommy. Thanks, Manuel. I appreciate that. Um, so yeah, man, I, I love it. And, and you say, you say Oz, but you were cranking those issues out and it's, and it's Eisner award winning. Right. Wonderful wizard of Oz, mind you. Like a lot of people that uh, haven't read it. It's a wonderful series. Like, especially if you're a fan of, and honestly, you don't even have to be a fan of the original books to right. enjoy this. This was such a, and I wish it had continued. I wish there was more. I wish there was a second omnibus. <laughs> Um, I don't know it if was you were fun. Sure. it definitely was fun. I mean, it was an, that was a, that was a really cool five years, um, that gave me, well, you know, it gave me a chance to do something that doesn't happen that often anymore, at least outside of creator own books, which is being on the same book for five years, you know, uh, like yeah, absolutely. I was one of the last people, I might be one of the last people at Marvel, um, besides Umberto probably who's, you know, done such a huge run on Spider-Man over the years, but mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, doing a run for that long straight with no, no, nobody else touched that book besides, you know, me, Eric, and John. That was, it was pretty much our book, you know? Yeah. So that was really cool. So I, now I got to ask because I think at one point in every artist's career, but it might have started for you early. When did you decide, hey, I could write a book? I could so write a book. Right. Like, when, when did that decide, like, were you always like, I've wanted to write my own comic book? Yeah, that's, okay. that's what's, what, that's the weird, the weird trajectory of my career or the trajectory of my career is weird because I grew up mostly reading image books and so the create your own books. So I just thought that you grew up, I just thought you made up your own stuff. I mm -hmm. never had like aspirations of drawing Spider-Man because I thought somebody already had that job. You know what I mean? It didn't yeah, again I, I, like a young person's mind. I did. I just was like, oh well, people have that job. I have to make up new comics. Um, so I just thought that's what I would end up doing. 
Um, and then I got the job at Marvel and one thing led to another and you kept going. But that idea of creating my own stuff never went away. It was just always a win, win, you know, okay, I'll take this job. Then. I mean, I, t we, I talked about it while working on spider clan. I talked about it while working on venom. Cool. I talked about it like each step of the way. I'd be like, you know what, when this is over, I will then do, um, and of course, just like life happens, you know, something pops up or you can't turn down or whatever. Um, but I'm glad because it gave me time to get my art in a place that I was very comfortable with. Um, you know, by the time I by the time I started writing, I had read so many comic book scripts and drawn so many that I, I was starting to understand the craft. So I think some of my natural inclinations of storytelling started to mix with what I'd learned. So when it came up that... Um, one of the first things I wrote at, was at Marvel. Um, yeah, you did Magneto, and then you did. Uh, yeah, that was the first mini series. But there was a there was a uh, John Barber had called me once and wanted me to draw. They were doing one of those kind of fifth week things where they just you know, throw, and it was like um they were doing Marvel monsters, and it was like two characters per. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and I was one of the first artists that they reached out to, and he they said. Hey, do you want to draw one of these monster stories? It's like 14 pages. And I was like, yeah, but like, yeah, I will. But can I write it too? And John, John was just like, well, yeah, sure. Just don't mess it up. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I was like, cool. So he just was like, that's all it took was just me asking, can I write it? And they were like, sure. And, and at that point I had also been working, uh, you know, like a side hustle in animation. So there's a lot of story development and, you know, reading scripts and story Bibles. So there was just a lot of starting to understand this, how structures of story work. So I wrote that, um, I wrote and drew that this monster of Frankenstein story and they're like, Hey, this is really cool. Um, and after that, Nick Lowe, um, uh, every time these X, if you remember those X-Men events, they always would have, you know, the divided we stand, which is like a bunch of short stories, yeah. anthology type books. So that came up and Nick, I did a little Anoli story since I had done that, you know, the school had blown up. And so I wrote like a five or six, seven, eight page story of, of, of Anoli running away. And, um, and Nick, Nick was always, Nick was always excited to work to, to give me chances to write because he, he, I think that he liked that. I didn't write, I didn't go straight for super, a superhero story because he always knew that I wasn't necessarily a super really weirdly enough working at Marvel those years. I wasn't like a superhero guy. So I always found a different lens to tell the story in, um, you know, instead of talking about the superhero aspect of Anoli, it was much more about who he was as a kid and how that lined up with the ideals of the X-Men and, and what they expect of him. And the fact that they sent, you know, Anoli was a young gay kid and the fact that they, the X-Men sent, uh, North star to talk to him. And they're like, and he's like, really? Is that, you think I'm just going yeah, to be you because you're also, you know, so because I could take, I think that, you know, I always try to find a different lens to go through there. Nick, Nick was always giving me extra chances to write. So I did a juggernaut story with Dan Panosian. And then of course um, the Magnino mini series was the first time they were like, Hey, you want to do this, this mini series? And I was like, Oh heck yeah, I do. Um, so I, it's again, the same thing of just going, I think I want to try that. And once I felt like, Oh man, I really have a, I really feel good about this. Um, they kept giving me the shot and really it wasn't until when, when finally um, it came time to, when I finished odds and they asked me what I wanted to do next, I was really conf I was conflicted. Cause I was like, I, I just spent five years drawing like fantasy stuff. I definitely know from now on, I want to just write whatever I draw. Like I kind of just, I had hit that place. Mm -hmm. um, and so they were like, cool. Um, I said, I just don't know that I can do a superhero story. Cause at first they wanted me to come off of Oz and go and do like a run with Brian on guardians of the galaxy. Cause I had just, he had just kind of launched that with Steve and Sarah Pacelli. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the movie stuff wasn't out yet. There was, I mean, there was, we, we knew there was going to movie be a movie somewhere in the, down the line, but we didn't know anything about it yet. No, nobody was, people weren't cast and all that, but, um, and I just was like, wow, I don't think that I'm the right fit with Steve and Sarah Pacelli. <laughs> Cause they're amazing. No, and they're it was job size, but, but it would be fun for me to write, and draw a rocket raccoon yes. 
mini series or like a series. And they were like, actually, that's a really good idea. And then, then I started going to writers retreats and, and that's it. Like since then I've been writing books for them, writing my own books, writing books, you know, so uh, all of a sudden that just opened again. And it didn't hurt that, that, that number one issue sold like 400,000 copies. <laughs> So that, that helped me a little bit. That's okay. So a, a couple of things. One, one thing I need to get off my chest, man. Um, th this is something that I think a lot of comic book readers go through when they see an artist that they love so much take on writing duties, right? They're like, right. oh man. Cause sometimes you take a gamble. You're like, oh, the writer, this, this artist can't write and, or this, this, this artist shouldn't be writing at all. You know, they're just giving him a chance because of the, of his, his or her name. But dude, I don't know if anybody has read Middle West. That that book is stellar. Like it's you, it, 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 it. I cannot wait for. I haven't finished the third volume because I'm waiting for the hardcover uh, complete collection, dude. Coming this summer. Yeah, baby, dude. I'm all over that, and I mean, I know that's gonna be my top one of my top 2021 books because I, I love the first two volumes. It's yeah. wonderful, and I know you don't draw it, but you're writing your craft, like you know. You, it, it's changed in in sure. ways like and I, honestly, it's a different tone than the things that you were used to writing, right? Like I hate Fairyland, which was also great, but Middle West is the one that I'm like, damn, Scott, he's a good writer. Like, thank you, man. He's a great writer, and yeah, I love it, man. And then my kids are now reading Strange Academy. Also, speaking of selling out, that first issue sold out well, a lot of times. Yeah, multiple covers and multiple right. prints, man. You gotta, you gotta be. Uh, you gotta be doing something right. Okay, so before we talk about Strange Academy, though, I have to ask: How in the world did the baby covers come about? Like, how? I know, like, did you just draw one and and somebody said, "Hey, that would be a good variant," and then they, the variant just sold so well that they were like, "Hey, all of number ones are now gonna have Scotty." Yeah, Young covers. That was such a fall backwards into a situation. Um, and it's right. It's the right time. It's timing's everything, right? Like, oh, absolutely. Um, a couple years. So in two thousand. So the first, the 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 first, the Avengers versus X Men cover that I did, the wraparound for yeah. for um, it was a Midtown exclusive. That was in two thousand twelve. Three years prior to that, I did a ser. I was the cover artist for a mini series called X Babies. It was oh, yeah. uh, uh, Jacob Shabbat and and um, oh, who wrote it? Anyway, it was uh, a mini series um, that I did the covers for, and nobody. I mean, people liked it, but it just came and went. Like the the, the yeah. series was the series was cool, um, but my the covers nobody. Look, Nobody was like, oh, gross. But they were like, there was no craze. It was just like, cool. Yeah. Um, about a year after that, um, Sheldon at Heroes, Art Hard to Find, who does Heroes Con, had, had, was like, hey, I love those covers. Do you want to do the badges this year for Heroes? It'd be cool if you do like the X-Baby. So I just did the badges for that. That was the next time I did it. Then flash forward to 2012. When Midtown is looking, you know, the big event mm -hmm. was um, the big event was um, Avengers versus X Men, and Midtown wanted an uh, ver you know exclusive variant for just their store. Uh, George Belliard at Marvel, who's kind of the special projects cover manager over there for for shops and stuff like that. Yeah, I think he suggested me, and Midtown was like, "Oh, cool." Um, I I think George asked them. Like, oh, you know what? He's done this, like the babies. Maybe it'd be cool to do like an X babies version. And they, I think that they were just like, yeah, cool. And so I just was like, oh, cool. I'll do it. I get to do a wraparound. And he's like, do put as many characters as you can on there. So I think I, I ended up with like 32, 33, 34 characters. Oh, wow. cool. Yeah, I remember. And I did it. And I remember rushing to finish it because I was getting ready to go to Germany for the first time to a convention. So right. I was like rushing to get this done. Um, and I got it done. And then that cover, I think like mid it, it like, exploded. Cause that thing, I didn't <laughs> stop seeing that cover. I didn't stop seeing that cover for a year, like online. Like it just, and so 
the timing of it, that's where it's like right around then in 2009, Funko pops, not a thing. Um, we're kind of coming out of a, we're kind of coming out of a realistic era of everybody. Everything's really gritty and looks photorealistic and all that. And all of a sudden you flash forward to 2012 and you're walking through the conventions and everybody's got some cute version of something on, you know, everybody's lightened up. A, we've all started having kids, right? So we used to be dark and gritty. Now we're all, (laughs) now we're all moms and dads. We're starting to lighten up. Um, and at right time. So all of a sudden that cover comes and then Marvel is also launching Marvel now, which is they they took all these creators who have been working on the same books for a while and they're going to swap them. So, you know, now so-and-so is writing the X-Men instead of Thor, whatever. Right. And so they're launching a whole bunch of number ones and they were said, Hey, do you want to do 10 covers in that style? And I was like, 10 at this point, I had never been, assigned that many covers so i just was like holy cow 10 and they're like yeah so i was like okay and so i did those first i started i got about to five and george came back and was like okay we've got another we've got another five i was like you want, like before i'm even done and and all of a sudden with before i knew it we were a year in and i had never not had one or two covers on my schedule each week and then then I was like, wait a minute, this is really a thing now. Like, and then when I realized, and in my head, this was still not my job. I, you know, I'm still working on Oz. Um, this was a, like my side hustle. So I didn't think about this as my style or anything. I love comic strips. I grew up yeah. reading Dennis the Menace and Peanuts and Calvin and Hobbes. And the, you know, so yeah, my heart's there as well, probably more so than superheroes. So it was my chance. I was like, I'll probably never be able to, I'll probably never do a strip on a r- huge running basis, but this is my version of that. Um, so that's why it was always more joke oriented. I wasn't really concerned with showing you how good I draw. It's always more like what kind of, what gag can I show you? Yeah. Um, and so all of a sudden I went, I was at a convention once and had my sketch list and, and a woman asked for beast. And so I just drew beast and then she came back to get it and, you know, paid me. And, and when I handed her the art, she was like, she did not like it. Like it was the, <laughs> she, literally, she was like, she was like, thanks. And oh. like walked off and I was like, I, w- I didn't understand what was happening. I was like, good Lord, that was hardcore. It occurred to me like 30, 45 minutes later that, she thought when she asked for beast, that there's a baby artist, the baby guy. And I did. So past that, I've always had to adjust how I ask people what they want, but I didn't realize like, that's when it clicked. Like, Oh, wait a minute. I've done so many of these now that a lot of people think that that's what I, that's just what I do, which is fine. I, I don't mind whatever people think they think. I think it's cool that people think about me. At all. <laughs> there's t-shirts pin. My kids and I collect the pin. We love those things. Yeah. So it's, that's kind of how it was like right time, right place. The, they launch a bunch of books, then the, they catch on. And, you know, CB hit me up the other day and asked if I had a number of how many I've done. And <laughs> I really don't. I mean, it, I definitely know it's 400. I mean, I think I'm in 400 somewhere, maybe more. I don't know. I just so it's it's yeah, it's definitely more than 300. Cause at one time we were like, well, let's collect all the covers. And I'm like, I think that's going to take up a lot of room. Let's collect all the pins. <laughs> yeah, <there you go. laughs> um, because man, that is crazy to think. That's why I was like, I think you, you have your pencils have grace just about every character in the Marvel universe. Um, and, and it's, and it's an ongoing thing. It's still, it's still a thing. Like you're working right. on covers now that are for books that are coming out later. I assume that. Well, have to- yeah. yeah. I'm always, I'm always month. Sometimes I'm working on covers for books that the, uh, art, they don't even have an artist for yet. <laughs> <laughs> but at least they got you ahead of the game. Mm-hmm. That's awesome, man. So let's, let's get to this book right here. Let's do it. Strange Academy. Awesome. So my eight-year-old, my, I'm sorry, nine uh, (laughs) and 11 and myself all read this and we all loved it. And how did all this come about? And they, they're going to come down here. They're in virtual school right now, but when they take a break here and ask a question, because I was like, just come up with a question. And they're like, we got it. We got it. Um, 
how did that come about? How did you come about with this idea? What, or was the story, like, was the idea thrown to you and be like, hey, can you write a Doctor Strange story about a group of kids? And, like, how did all this come about? Well, one of my favorite Marvel books when I was coming up was Generation X um, by Scott Abdell and Chris Bacello. Um, and I really liked that because... Coming up, I had always read X-Men and I understood that they called it this, you know, Xavier's Institute for Gifted Youngsters or whatever. But the book never read like a school book. Like I know that they were technically in a school, but it still just felt like adults doing big, like superhero stuff. Yeah. And then Generation X came along and for the first time, it actually felt like weird kids are going to a school together. Um, and it was the first time that I was like, wow, like, mutants really are weird like like they would have to learn about themselves right like a guy's power is he has excess skin you know yeah like, what do you do with that so i was really drawn to that book um and then early in my career zeb wells and i were um trying to pitch a generation x kind of relaunch um so i've, I've always i've always had an affinity for the school books um so you know when, once it got to i think i was I was working on Deadpool at the time, writing Deadpool, and um, I was always kicking around different ideas, even for creator own stuff. And one one was the possibility of doing some sort of school book. And um, I just thought, I think I can't remember if Doctor Strange the movie had just come out. Uh -huh. but I, it just occurred to me that I was like, you know, there's a lot of magic at Marvel. Like, there's just a lot of magic. To be to be talked about like not just with dr strange but every everything has a hint of magic you know like yeah, asgard, of asgard limbo you all can't get them. away from it like right it's magic um, which every, all every, so yeah. i was like wow maybe th maybe that's a thing maybe that's an option for my school book you know and so i literally it was like 10 30 11 at night mm -hmm. i just texted cb and i was like hey man i really think like, I think we, I think I want to do like a magic, like a Marvel magic school, yeah, like a magic school in the Marvel universe. And we, and I was like, we take characters from here and here and here and here. And he was like, that's kind of cool. And so I kind of kicked it around with him a little bit here and there. And then, um, I got invited up to, uh, an executive ed editorial retreat where I was, I was the only creator there. Um, and, and I thought I was coming for some other reasons, but when I got there, it just said Scotty's magic book was on the agenda. And I was like, what? <laughs> so I didn't even, I wasn't even really prepared to pitch it. That's it was awesome. just like for like forming in my head, but I, and um, I know magic's not the, the, the easiest thing to deal with on a storytelling front because, you know, for, for, for books to have stakes, you want, you, you need ma magic needs to have some rules um, so that's a hard thing. So I really thought I was going to pitch this and people weren't, it wasn't going to go over very well. Um, but it really went the other way. Like the, everybody was like instantly jumping in and thinking about all this other stuff we might be able to do with it. And, um, so yeah, it was really just a late night idea that, that had been floating in my head for a while in various forms thrown over to, um, CB, CB brought it to the group. Everybody seemed to like it. And then, you know, I went through a couple of creative retreats where I formed it up a little bit more solid and solid until, um, we had it going, you know, and, and here we are. Well, I know you have three big fans over here and I, and I got two little girls that are right here beside me that want to have, uh, um, all right, who wants to go first? Come here, Alicia. You go first. Right. No. Yeah, you go first. Yeah. All right. Get your go right there. <laughs> all right. Stop. Come here. This Hi. is Alicia. She's my nine-year-old and loved your Strange Academy. Well, thank you. Uh, did you did you have a question for M Mr. Young? <laughs> yeah. Okay. What's your question? Um, my I oh, got my favorite character is Shaylee because she's always excited. Um, what's your favorite character that you have created? You know what? I'm gonna say. It's a tie between Shaylee and Doyle. I like. I also like Shaylee because she's really excited all the time and talks a lot like I do and just talks really fast and never stops talking. Um, <laughs> so I really like, I like writing her because I think she's also funny. 
Um, but then I also really like Doyle, not only because he looks so cool, but I like him because he is supposed to thinks he's supposed to be one thing and he's trying to figure that out and see if he can kind of be something else that people don't expect from him. Like more, like most kids. Yep. Yeah. So what do you say? Mm -hmm. you know, That's a very good question. I love that question. Yeah. There you go. Thank All right. You. One more, one more. Mm -hmm. she, was, she, she was wondering, oh, yeah. this is my oldest. This is Lydia and she is 11. Hello, Lydia. Hi. Scotty also has an 11 year old. I do. My son is 11 Baxter. Yeah. So what was your question for him? So um, I really like Dusty because like, just like sometimes she acts like me, like she's sort of like really quiet, just like, <laughs> which yeah. is me because um, I'm not that talkative, especially around like older people. Like I'm not very talkative because sure. I have no idea what to say. <laughs> <laughs> what was your question? So um, what was your inspiration for Desi? Um, I think that um, Desi was very much a little bit of um, my son is also my 11 year old is also very um, smart and likes books and really reads a lot and watches YouTube and takes in a lot of information. And um, sometimes it's interesting to see how he translates that to other people or how he takes in information from other people. So to me, I really wanted to explore what it was like for somebody who, um, you know, my, my two kids, one is very naturally able to just go out and talk to everybody. And one is like, thinks about it. So it, it was a little bit of me exploring the idea of a character who that might not be her like skill at the moment, but she's very interested in learning about it more and stepping outside of her comfort zone and growing. Um, so I love writing that character because it's fun for me as well to see, like think about how would a character who maybe hasn't been around this type of person or this type of moment or situation, or even feeling a feeling that she might have, she would, I like, I like having a character that's not afraid to ask the questions, even though other people sometimes might be like, that was an awkward question, but doesn't bother Desi. She's just like, well, I want to know the answer. You need to give it to me. <laughs> yeah. So it was definitely a little bit of, I was definitely inspired by, um, younger kids who exactly what you said might not feel that comfortable with it, but also knowing that it's always okay to ask questions and there's never anything wrong with trying to learn and grow in that way. Yeah. Yeah. What do you say? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> no, thank you so much. I'm really glad you liked the book and I love that you love her because she's one of my favorite characters as well. She, uh, that is, yeah, that's, that's, that's my daughter. I mean, that's yeah. the exact way that, and I knew when I read it before they did that they would, she would really like her character. Well, that's what I, you know, one of my real big goals was to try to step outside of, of myself and, and really look around me and try to fit, find a character, one of these kids that fits, that would represent somebody out there, you know? Yeah. And I think that's good because there is a quite a variety of characters. Okay. Right. Love you. I love you. you know, Thank you. You don't want to yeah, give me a kiss on the air? Is that what we're doing? <laughs> Go back to class. Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. I know yeah, they, they, they love the book. So um, how – whose idea was to have Humberto Ramos on here? Like, how? Because I know you liked his artwork. Oh, yeah. Inspiration. So – was this your idea or was this like an editor? To he's say one of my favorite. He's one of my favorite artists of all time. Um, I mean, I knew Umberto when I was, I mean, I, I, Umberto was one of my favorite artists when I was in high school, like getting out of just graduating high school. Right. So, and, and over the years we had become friends. So we, we were close. Um, but when I pitched this and it got greenlit and we started talking about art, I, it's not that I didn't think about him because I he's not my first choice. I didn't think about him because I didn't think there was any way we would get him. Um, like I didn't like this was my little like private corner of the universe magic book. Yeah. I, I just think think there was any way we we're gonna lure him off of Spider Man um, to do this right. Mm -hmm. um, so when Nick, so I I was just we were just tossing names around. And, and Nick Lowe was like, well, what about Umberto? And I was like, you do like, that's an option. Like, you know what I mean? I was like, I was like, don't mess with me. If that's an option, 
then that's number one choice, you know? Yeah. And then, and then, you know, whatever the, the side of the business stuff, I was like, I mean, then it came down to a thing of like, Oh my God. You know, cause it, you still got to talk about affording a book. I was like, can you, can you afford, can we afford like, but <laughs> um, it, it also, the timing was timings, everything. It was also this weird timing where I'm getting ready to go down to CB and I are going down to Mexico for a convention that Umberto is helping uh, facilitate. Yeah. So Umberto comes and picks me up at the airport um, that the night that I got in and we had a little bit of a drive between the airport and the, in the hotel. And I pitch him the book in the car and bef he, before we even get to the hotel, he's like, I'm in like, he was, he was just instantly, Oh my God, this is exactly what I want to do. I'm in. Uh, and then we locked it in. And so it was just like right time, right place. I guess this, you know, he was wrapping up Spider-Man. Um, and so like dream come true. Cause I think Umberto is one of the best, like teenage character artists in our business. Um, 100%. Yeah. I mean, just his ability to, his acting skills, his character um, body types, um, his diversity, every everything about him is so geared at nailing younger characters that I really honestly don't know that this book would have been able to, would have been the same or achieved what we've achieved so far with anybody else. He's that, he is that good. And, and I really believe I, this is it has this has nothing to do with me, but I truly believe he's doing some of the best work of his entire career. I love the way that the magic is casted in this. For those of you that uh, this book does come out here in I think it's um, the end of this month is when mm -hmm. the first graphic novel comes out. But I love the art, like when they use the magic. It's very, it's very unique, and it look, feels natural. I look the colors. Um, I've been following his work for a long time. Too. Right. I swear I'm not an artist stalker. I just appreciate artists. Sure. That art is awesome. And ever since his work on Impulse, and he came over to Marvel and did X Nation uh, 2099. Yeah. And, and I mean, the guy just, you, you know, because at first when he first started in Impulse, he had those big eyes, and I'm like, eventually, like I was like, oh man, that's just another anime ripoff artist. But I bought that first issue of Impulse. And I'm like, no, this guy's good. I love like his exaggerated poses and, and things. Right. Well, he was like a he was like a natural progression of like, um, you know, like looking back now, like a mix between like Art Adams and oh, yeah. like uh, Carlos Meglia, right? Like just like a really yeah, nice yeah really good mix of some of those guys and 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 obviously he's evolved so much over these years but yeah i think he's he, he's doing the work of his career in this book it's it's crazy i'm loving it um here we have a super chat but love your deadpool run dog Thank you. <laughs> yeah you did uh what 15 issues of deadpool right? yeah 15 or 16 something like that yeah yeah um, right before Kelly Thompson's run. But I, I agree. I love Humberto Ramos's artwork in this. The writing is good. All the kids are... It's fun to read a book. Like, man, it feels so weird. Like, reading this stuff when I was a kid, like New Mutants growing up, and then mm -hmm. Gen 13, Gen X, and things like that. You connect with the kids, right? Yeah. You never think about who's writing them. Because as a kid, you're like, oh, man, this is... Right. This sounds just like me, or I like to hang with you. Right. Right. That's cool. Right. Now I'm reading it like like as a parent. This sounds just like my daughter. Yeah, <laughs> it's, like it's so strange that man. How well, that's the interesting thing for writing from that angle too. Is is um you know a lot of times people are like, well, what do you know about writing kids? Well, it's like, well, I have kids and I they're a lot they're around a lot. And as the adult, you see a lot. You see some of the struggles that they're um, going through, and you know what's going to be on the other side of it better than they do. So sometimes it's 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 a good exercise in in studying some of that stuff and trying to trying to recreate it and put put it on put it on the page, um, which is a book like this, which is really fun, where where um you know where I feel like I'm dealing a lot more with character development than I am with plot, <laughs> but, um, just because I love the interaction of these kids together, you know. Yeah, and I think it it, it helps out, right? Plot will come. Yeah, I, I, think it, I think it's great. Now, this is uh, this is an ongoing series. The first six issues are collected in this graphic mm -hmm. novel. Um, how far ahead are you in the script? Like, how much different is that than drawing? 
Like, um, I just turned, I just finished issue 11. Mm -hmm. Um, I have, I have 24 issues mapped out, um, and planned and, and pretty, pretty detailed. Um, how many, how many issues? I have, I have 24 currently planned. Okay. Um, and, and a, like I said, pretty much know exactly what's going to happen in those with, you know, with, with a little wiggle room here and there. So, um, but yeah, like I, I just finished 11 and working on 12. So I'll have that. Um, and Umberto's not far behind me. Um, so we're, we are pretty, we're pretty far ahead um, from where I think eight just got eight, just seven and eight are out now. Yeah, I know my kids have read seven. Uh, they haven't read it yet, so I have yeah. to find that for them. Yeah. Seven and eight are out, and then I, there might be a skip month. Maybe I can't remember, but yeah, seven and eight are out, and then yeah, so we're now, rolling. Now, hear me out, Scotty. You got twenty four issues planned, right? You throw an annual in there, sketches and things like that. That makes for a nice omnibus. Just saying. Uh, I I agree. I actually just pitched. I actually just pitched um, something that might help like do a little bridge gap if we needed to do a little, if anybody needed to take a break. Cause I'm also one, one thing that I was very adamant about and really fought hard for was that this book is just me and Alberto and Edgar, like um, no fill-ins. No, ah, like so that's, that was a artist. very, like as an artist turned writer, that was, it's, it's definitely something that I feel. And I, 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 I felt that this book, a lot of the goals with this book, and I think so, the the audience that we, I think that we can reach out to, and and I think David Gabriel and a lot of people at Marvel agree, think that as well, like trying to reach out to different audiences than just just a, a you know a, a superhero fan or a regular you know Wednesday Warrior fan, which we all are, but you know <laughs> trying, right, like trying to reach out to some of the readers who you know pick up the. It's classic graphic novels and you know the look exactly you get a book like this that right. that is exactly the perfect place uh because you know this will be seen at, at my kids school right where they open up completely but right. yes so that's where we wanted to try to um i i thought it was really important to that if we are going to if we are going to try to put a foot out there to make sure that it felt like what what everybody's used to which is a consistency um and once I started seeing what Umberto was doing, I was like, there's no way he can't have ownership of this entire thing. Like when we're, when, if we're ever done with this, I want, I want us all to just have, cause I know what it feels like to pick up that Oz omnibus and just know that this giant, you know, this right here, like, <laughs> like to, when you can like pick up a book and you can just say like, I drew everything in here, you know? Oh yeah. Um, that is a really cool thing. Um, and Umberto's working too hard to like have it, you know, stop and have somebody. So I, I had pitched just a couple, actually maybe was it yesterday or the day before I had just pitched the idea of a um, like special features kind of book. You know, if we needed, if we needed a little something extra, like it, I think it'd be cool to have, yeah, like a, you know, um, I think I, I, I think I pitched Strange Academy extra credit, <laughs> you know, like uh, where you, where we can do some extra stuff and show some behind the scenes and basically like DVD special features, you know. Dude, let me tell you, you filled that book up because uh, one of my favorite things about these books, uh, collected editions, um, big the big omnis and yeah, you, know, you know, not just the the variant covers, but the the, the art progress, like the sure. where you start off with a sketch where the idea came from and even, even the character studies, you throw that in there, man. I love, I know I'm not the only one that loves no, that. I'm the same. That's I am the exact same way. And this book has a lot of extras and yeah. And I love the fact that you said you, Umberto, that, that, that's awesome because, you know, that's kind of the way that, I mean, manga has been right. You mm -hmm. have the creator, and then sometimes the the writer and the artist, and that's it. If yep. they don't, if they want to take a break from the book, they take a break from the book, and no one else fills in. Uh, it seems like most of the time in American comics, that's what happens. They're like, "Oh man, Umberto is sick. Like, we got to get somebody else to draw it." And so, I understand that. I mean, I understand that because we are in the business of periodicals, monthly, right? Monthly, it's, yeah. it's monthly periodicals is really what we what we deal in, um, and and. And I'm really happy that that Marvel um, really was on board and really supportive of us treating this book a little different in that way to say, hey, 
you know, if we need to pause, let's do a pause or we'll, or at least strategically plan it, you know, cause I also, I mean, Umberto is fast, but we also don't want to kill the guy. Uh, right. And, and he's, right. he's, he can get pretty mad at me because I do clearly don't um, let him put his, take his foot off the gas as far as how many characters I have <laughs> drawing in this book. <laughs> there are a lot of characters and they're, they're so diverse too that none of them use the same kind of magical powers and they all come from different backgrounds and stuff. I love it. Um, I I think it's awesome, man. And that gives that gives me a lot of hope. And because I remember as a kid, you know, sometimes you get used to the 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 team. You're right. like, oh man, that's not Bill St. Cabbage. Who is this artist right. working on my new mutants right. this right. month? Or, um, and it sometimes you know it puts people off. So when you get used to the same team working on the same characters and, you know, if this blows up and it becomes a season two and you're like, yeah, somebody else can write the characters. That's fine. At least you have that one big omnibus that says Scotty right. uh, Bartol Ramos and right. I think, and uh, Edgar Delgado, I forgot because he's, he's a big part of this too. Um, so yeah, man, it's been a lot of fun talking to you, brother. Well, you too, brother, man. It's, it's uh like I said, we, we, we talked about this off camera before, but uh, it's always really cool for me to to still be chatting with people who I chatted with, you know, my first years. <laughs> Long time ago when we first yep. chatted on a podcast. Yep. <laughs> uh, I think so. I, yeah, a big thank you to Megan for putting this together. Uh, David Gabriel for even mentioning, hey, you want to interview Scotty? He's a good right. guy. And I'm like, yes. Yeah, David's, David's one of my oldest friends, man. He's been around as long as I have at Marvel. So yeah, we've been, we're OG buddies, man. That's awesome. I love it. He's such a good guy. Too. He really is. Um, we got a super chat from Joe. Thank you, Joe. What's up, Scotty? Huge fan. I'm also a huge hip hop fan lately when I draw. So yeah, Joe also draws. Uh, hip hop just gets me going. What is your favorite hip hop album to listen to when drawing? Ooh. Oh, good question. My favorite hip hop album to listen to when I'm drawing. I mean, nowadays it's not as much albums as it is just random playlists or an artist radio, but I would probably say in recent years, um, it would have to be Aesop Rock's Impossible Kid album. Um, I think that's one of my favorite albums of all time now, uh, as far as hip hop goes. Um, so I do a lot of Aesop Rock. Um, I'll do a lot of Doomtree stuff. Um, and then, you know, I'll hop on Spotify and just do Aesop Rock radio, which will throw in people similar. Um, uh, but I, it never fails for me either to just do put on, um, shuffle, uh, red man's entire catalog. Yes. My red, man. red man's one of my favorite MCs of all time. So anytime that I really just want to feel happy and just like in it, I'll just put red man on shuffle and that, that, that never fails. Nice. Uh, good answer. Good answer. This is a really good, uh, just a couple of good comments. And then I know you got to get going because you're a busy guy because you're drawing 800 different uh, covers. Uh, Scotty's artwork has had such a huge impact on Marvel books, just like Jack Kirby, Tom McFarlane, Jim Lee. When someone, this is true, when someone sees your work, they recognize it right away. They're, I mean, absolutely. You look at a cover, my kids will grow up thinking of you the way you grew up thinking of artists. That's that so you weird. <laughs> I know. Well, it, it, I, appreciate, I appreciate that, James. It's uh, it's always nice to hear that. It's weird because I think as artists, you don't think you don't see yourself like that. Um, because I still think like every drawing I do is different. It's it's usually kind things like that that make me realize like, oh, maybe maybe I am filling that slot now. <laughs> Thanks for the super chat. Scotty, I'm super rich. How much would I need to pay you to redraw the entire Sandman series? 75 issues and overture and the death mini? How I want to know how rich. That's uh I'm super rich. How whew, that'd be fun though. You know how cool that would be? Oh, absolutely. That would be oh. so fun. Maybe I, that'll just if 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 Hugs for Drugs is rich enough, that might be my new career. Just drawing Sandman. Just only drawing only Sandman. Uh, bootleg, bootleg redraw of Sandman. I wonder how Neil Gaiman would feel about that. Or all the artists that worked on that book, like Sam Keith and Kelly right. Jones. Who is this guy? Oh, man. But, um, dude, thank you so thank much you, for being man. here. This was a lot of fun. You are always welcome back on the show. Uh, maybe when my daughters get a little bit older, they'll ask you more questions. But, Lydia, I saw that she was getting a little shy. So I, no, I love <laughs> They did great. And I'm, I'm – I am. I gotta say, I'm. And you, you, know, you can and show the tour, pass it along to her. I'm very proud of her for uh, at, for knowing that it makes her nervous to do it, but asking the question anyway. She did fantastic. That's awesome. 
then I will definitely pass that along yeah. to her and she can watch this and hear awesome. it herself. Uh, okay, really quick though. This is a good question. Yep. Leo, I'll get to your question later. Uh, did you give the girl the baby beast? Oh no, she never came back. She she was yeah. long gone, I but I remember her forever. Like I, I told that story a lot, but I'll always remember uh, how disappointed she was um that and it was this is a woman this is a grown woman it wasn't even a kid it was like she but yeah i'll never i'll never forget her face her crestfallen face <laughs> all right my brother thank you so much Thanks, uh, dude. For me. Uh, everybody don't forget to hit that like button go and check out strange academy this book has sold out for several reasons and one of them being of course scotty's writing and i'm excited for middle west brother now do you get that in advance we can we can end this and i can ask you this question okay. 